So welcome back everyone, Triple M here, and today we're taking a look at the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro. Now this is the ultimate standalone video recorder. For anyone that looking to capture your own content, this is gonna be ideal. So with this device, you can easily record HDMI videos from your video players, your set-top box, web cameras, DSLR cameras, camcorders, game consoles, USB drive, and a lot more. And the cool thing about this is you can record up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Now this does have ultra low latency and up to 4K at 60 frames per second video pass through. So especially if you're a gamer, if you have a PS5, Xbox Series One X, this is gonna be a great option to capture some of your gameplay. Also with this, you can schedule recordings that way you can never miss your show. You can record from your HDMI devices. That includes your Fire Stick, your Nvidia Shield. You can record any video that you want including HDCP supported video. So in this video, we're gonna quickly unbox it, go through the setup, go through the menus, do a quick overview. In the comments, let me know what you guys think of this one. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. All right, so here's the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro. You can see some of the key features there. 4K at 30 frames per second, schedule recording, UVC standard live stream on Windows, Mac, and Linux, ultra low latency, which we'll be testing out. Also have live commentary and online in and out. Some of the compatibility, set-top box, video camera, camcorder or camera. We also have a game system, Blu-ray players, uh, streaming devices like your Apple TV, Nvidia Shield, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and get it unboxed. All right, so we have some contact information. We also have a manual right here. Basically gonna tell you everything you need to know about this. Inside, QR code, get an express replacement with free shipping. All right, so some of the warranty stuff there. Shows the contents of the box, which we're gonna get into. Remote control, we have our record stop, display, camera, navigation. This doubles up as a fast forward as well. Uh, okay in the middle, menu, back, play, pause, video, image, delete. We have the microphone control right here. So we have uh, plus, minus, uh, mute, and we also have our volume control. Uses uh, two AAA batteries. So we also have power adapter. We have a, a micro USB to USB-A. HDMI cable. All right, so <laughs> this is actually a stunning looking design. Really uh, well done in my opinion. You can see the corner lines a logo there, 4K UHD recorder. All right, so we have our line in, line out. We have our mic input, IR sensor right there, H264, snapshot, stop. We also have our connection to the PC. So this is where that micro USB cable is gonna come in. We have a storage option so you can connect your hard drive to this. On the other side, we have our power button. We have our AC adapter receptacle, HDMI out, HDMI in. And that's pretty much it, guys overall really good design really digging it so far so we're going to go ahead and get this connected so here we are i got it plugged in and this essentially is going to have two set of leds so we're going to have leds on the top or the top indicator and we're going to have a side led and those mean various things so as far as the top indicator if it's stable blue that means the output and recording resolution is set to 4k if it's stable green, that means the output and recording resolution is set to 1080p or below. So if you have a 720p, it should be a stable green as well. If it's blinking blue or blinking green, that means that it has no input or unsupported input. And we'll get into the HDCP protection here in a little bit. Now the side indicator as well, right now you can see nothing's there. So a couple things, when it's off, that means there's no signal from the storage device. So right here, I do have a SSD. Let's go ahead and plug that in. And we're going to plug it into the side right here. And we'll just give it a second. All right, so you can see it just turned blue. As far as the LED on the side indicator off means that there's no storage device or no device connected or unusable storage device. Stable blue means that encoding is set to H264 and stable green means that encoding is set to H265. So all of this is also um, highlighted in the booklet. So before we jump into the menu, let's also go over the remote a little bit more. So one thing I love about this is that it has uh, some advanced controls for your microphones as well as your output. So uh, remember that this does have a mic input, so you can plug in directly. And uh, 
if you're too loud or you're too low, you can't adjust that using these buttons right here. So we do have mic controls. You can see we can turn it down, turn it up. We can mute it completely. And below we have the speaker or this is going to be the HDMI um, volume. So whatever device is plugged in here that's going to your source, uh, this is where you control this. All right, so first thing you can see on the side, uh, it gives you some vital information while it's looking for your signal. So it tells you the format. Right now it's set to H264, but if I switch it to H265, you can see that that switch on the screen. We have the bit rate that's set to low. We have the mic input. So that's currently set to none. And I do have a microphone that I will be testing a little bit just to kind of see what kind of quality we're getting. We also have the HDMI and no signal we have schedule and a loop recordings turned off and we have the disk usage all right so we're going to go into our main menu so first we're going to have our recording settings so with the recording settings if you click on it you have a couple options you can switch it from h265 to 264 we do have the bit rate that you can change right now it's set to low so that will save you a little bit of um disk space i'm, I'm guessing but you can't set it to high and that's probably where i'm going to leave that you have the always display recording that's turned on i'm going to leave that on as well and you also have the file size and right now it's a 16 gig file at three hours so you can't always play with that if you want a larger file size, you can change it. I have the time watermark, which I'm gonna leave off. Basically, it's gonna be an overlay on your recording, showing your time. And you do have loop recording, um, and I'm gonna leave that off as well. Next is our schedule settings. So this comes in handy if you wanna schedule the recording. So maybe you have a, a TV box or a game or something plugged in that you wanna record. You can always set it and just have it do it automatically. So you have the schedule, you can turn it on and off. Uh, when you turn it on, it gives you the different ranges. You can see I have up to three schedules that I can manage. We do have our schedule recording mode. So we can do it once or we can do it every day. Time ranges and we have one, two, and three as well. So uh, let's turn that on. And you can see for each range, you have a set amount of recordings or you can add more recordings. Next is gonna be our system settings. Currently in English, but you can see we have, it looks like Chinese maybe Japanese, Korean, I'm just guessing at this point. Um, but let's just count the amount of languages. Um, so English, let's say that's Chinese one, maybe Mandarin there. We also have Japanese, Korean, and back to English. So that's five total. We also have your system date, which I went ahead and set already. So this is for all your recordings. How do you want to play them back? So if you want to just play back a single file, you can set that. You can turn it off completely or you can do the full list of all your recordings. So I think full list is an option. So maybe you have multiple files. You can just keep looping basically. And last but not least, you have the option to reset. All right, video playback is just gonna show what's currently on your storage device. I currently have nothing. And our photo playback is essentially is gonna be the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and start with some test recordings. So HDCP is uh, embedded in this box, which means that you cannot copy um, copyright protection material, but uh, in uh, this case, it's not applicable because uh, let's say for instance, you have a fire stick. As soon as you plug it in, it's not going to be detected because the fire stick has HDCP protection. However, maybe you only want to record maybe a setting on your fire stick. Maybe you're doing a tutorial. Maybe you want to record something, how to set something up and send to a family member. There's a number of applications. Plus, we have the fair use where if you own the content, you should be able to play with your content. So by default, it is turned off, but you can turn it on and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So let's start with an easy device. This is not gonna have HDCP protection, just a camera. All right, so all I need is a HDMI connection. I do have the micro HDMI. So we're gonna plug in the HDMI there. And we're just gonna go ahead and uh, turn it on. All right, so we'll give it a second. All right, so you can see <laughs> that it's turned on. Let me go ahead and we'll start recording. So we'll go ahead. So now that we, we have the option to record, we have a signal, we can go ahead and start recording. Let's hit it. All right, so you can see it's up there that I am recording. Let me record on the camera as well. So I'm recording on both sources, on the camera as well as on the actual um, device. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll try to get a tight zoom there. And um, what I'll try to do is just compare the quality maybe between the recorded video and the video that's coming straight from the camera. To look at the Culinary Alliance. All right, zoom in there with the camera. Everything else, all the magic that's happening. 
All right. Here is Melody. Let me see if I can zoom in there. Here's Melody. Kind of in the way. Um, but we'll go ahead and stop the recording. But that was pretty straightforward. No HDC protection. Straight run from a camera. Something like a Fire Stick. Maybe a PlayStation. PlayStation is going to have HDCP protection. But you can't turn it off. But some devices you're not going to be able to. And this is where the bypass comes into play. So now we have the Chromecast with Google TV. We're going to plug it in. And I'll show you what I experienced. So the Chromecast with Google TV is going to be HDCP protected. Which means that when you plug it in, you're not going to get a signal. What you'll see is what it's doing now, which is flashing. And what that means basically is that um, it's an error or it's not getting a signal. In this case, it's because the Chromecast is, is currently blocking. Now, if we look at the menus, uh, you can see it says no signal. So right now it's flashing, not showing a signal, but to bypass HCC protection on this device. Now, all you have to do is locate the H264-265 button, press and hold it for five seconds. And there we go. So um, now that we're in here, let me go ahead and we'll start recording. So we are recording and you can see, and you can see that the record icon is in the top left. That was one of the options that we can turn off. But like I said, I like to know whether I'm recording for sure or not. So definitely gonna leave that out there. That's not gonna show in any video. So with HDCP protection being turned off, now you should be able to record anything that's on your device. Uh, this is gonna be the same experience for your Roku. This is gonna be the same experience for your Fire Stick. This is gonna be the same experience or your Chromecast or Google TVs. Like I said, this is not about pirating content, but um, this can be for educational purposes. Uh, this can be for just recording certain settings. Maybe you wanted to show someone how to do something in your device and you just want to be able to get into it, record it real quick. We've got a job to do. Mark. Adler. Historic Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's been a tight game throughout, and it remains that way as we pick up the action in the fourth quarter. Winston now to throw on first down. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Camara. Oh, Aaron Rodgers in his offense. Down by 15. A minute four on the clock. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And he's getting on first down, Rodgers. That is caught by Amari Rodgers. All right, so I just wanted to do a quick microphone test. Uh, you can see when I plugged in there, it did detect it automatically that the mic is uh, pulled in. Now, one thing I did notice is that when I had the mic volume turned up to more than 10, I did hear some static, some feedback in the actual video or in the audio. So I'll play that so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. So what I had to do essentially is turn it all the way down. I believe it's at 10 right now, about halfway. But if you start going up and um, you can hear there's a quite a bit of noise. Plus I can hear myself, which I'm sure gets annoying. Um, try muting the output, but that didn't make a difference. So output is mute and turn it up again. Check one, two, test one, two, test one, two. So that's still there. So it's not the actual speaker output. Seems to have to do with the microphone. But like I said, turn it down to about 10, 12, or 13. Um, then that works with no issues. And I can take a snapshot right there. You can see I can do it during the video playback. It uh, doesn't really stop your recording, which I, I think is pretty cool as well. 
All right, so I uh, got a couple recordings and let me show you what it looks like on the actual device. So, so to get the recordings, you have a video button. You also have the image button. So let's see what images we have. So you can see I took a couple images there. Just testing it out. To delete it, all we have to do is push the delete button. All right, it's going to ask you if you want to delete. Yes. And then that should be it. So pretty much the same thing will apply to when you're actually trying to play the video. But the cool thing about the video is that it actually gives you a preview when you hover over it. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to press the video button. All right. So you can see it actually starts playing right away. And you can click on it, of course. And you can fast forward it. So that's the mic test that we did earlier. And like I said, pretty straightforward to delete. Whatever you want to delete, all you have to do is press the delete button. That will get rid of it but uh pretty cool guys uh this works really well the fact that you can record anything you want not just your gameplay not just your camera but also you can record your fire stick you can record your roku device you can record your know, video shield tv this leaves everything wide open so that works really well but this also works as a video capture card for your computer so you can essentially use the usb cable plug this into your computer and use it as a capture source let's go ahead and test that out when you purchase this device you'll get two software that comes with it all you need to do is go to their website put in your serial number and you'll have access to the mp4 cloner as well as the cloner lines helper now once you plug the usb into the computer it will detect the cloner lines as a video capture device so which means that if you plug in maybe a camcorder or a streaming box whatever into the cloner lines it will show up on your computer as a camera source so uh you can see with this a lot of options open not only can you use this in the camera app as i'm demonstrating right here but also if you have obs studios you can also pop that up you can use it as a source and again flexibilities that you can plug whatever you want to into that device and it will show up as a video capture source so the corner lines helper is a great application a lot of cool options in here gives you the option to not only record uh, maybe a screen record audio you get to go in there and select which inputs you want to use but you can save your videos you can save the audios you can play them and you can even start your live stream from this application so the Chrome Alliance helper is a very useful application in my opinion so the other application is the mp4 cloner another useful application you can see with this you can trim you can combine videos you can convert videos and you can burn uh, your videos to a cd or to a dvd disc so a lot of options with these two applications and the cool thing is that these are actually included with your purchase so to wrap this up this is a great device for not only capturing your your video content whether it's on your fire stick on your your video camera maybe it's on your playstation possibilities are limitless on this but also this doubles up as a great capture card for your computer so if you guys are interested in this i'll leave the link in the description where you can go ahead and check it out along with any coupon codes that might be available again big shout out to cloner lines for sponsoring this video if you're new to the channel subscribe smash the notification bell thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. So just a quick disclaimer, this is a unique version of Cloner Alliance's capture card. This allows me to capture HDCP content. As we all know, Cloner Alliance is HDCP compliant, which means that if you were to purchase this device through official channels, you will not have that option to copy HDCP content. However, you can still use it to capture your videos, your video games, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, drop it in the comments. Thank you for watching again, and I'll catch you on the next one.